Okay guys, welcome back. It's tutorial time again. I uh, told you last time that I'd be showing you how to do leather on miniatures and I started with those three characters that we were looking at before where I did the skin tones and I thought I'd do a little bit more work and when I got to the point where we're doing the leather I'd go ahead and clue you in and show you how we do it. Um, if you take a look here and you can see I'm giving her some dark blue boots and a turquoise skirt. I've given him a nice light blue skirting and this guy is wearing mostly leather so really there wasn't much to do aside from from the leather and some uh, metal work on him. When you do leather there's a couple things to remember. Uh, the main thing is that leather has many 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 different colors in it um, but the pri primary color that you're going to find is the base skin tone of the animal that the leather is cut from. So your first step is going to be to actually paint up and base the parts that are going to be leather. And for this tutorial and for most of my leather I actually will either start with the desert sand that I use a lot or um, the territorial beige. Uh, for this specific use I'm going to go ahead and do both. Dep it depends on the figure. Um, I'm going to do the lighter on our dark skinned individual. I'm going to do the darker on He Man. And for our blacksmith, I'm going to go ahead and do the lighter because there's wood on here and the darker is better for that wood. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go into time lapse mode here in a second. And when I come back, I'll show you the next steps.
Okay, we're back. And I don't remember what I said, but I decided to go with the light leather on this guy. Um, I'm gonna tell you straight out, leather is interesting because since you're gonna be layering, whoops, I apologize, let me move my light there. Since we're gonna be layering on these guys, um, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see them. That right there. So we're gonna be layering on these guys. You can start out lighter and work down, it'll be really difficult to bring the color back up. On He-Man here, I did a combination of the darker color, the lighter color, and on the back, since that's two different surfaces, I did, I did both colors. Um, and you can mix your own colors for these, but really, I'm gonna recommend that you go ahead and use um, a combination of colors. I use Agrax or Shade and Seraphim Sepia. These are both shades from Citadel Miniatures um, to get most of my leather effects. For He-Man here, I want him to have a really nice contrast between um, the skirting and the leather on the sides here. So I'm gonna also use a the Karlberg Crimson uh, shade for this. But starting with, with our blacksmith, honestly, it's really simple, and there's, whoops, I missed a spot on this guy here. I'm gonna hit that up so it'll dry by the time by the time we're ready for it. But when you're working with leather, well, working with leather tones, the thing you need to remember is that leather is a combination of colors in nature. A lot of people think it's just brown. Um, you can get brown from a boiled hide, but under all that, the, co the, the base color of most tan leather, and it's the tanning process, there's a yellow to it. These days we use chemicals, but back in the day, uh, it was a combination of urine and the animal's brains, both of which rendered down to add a yellow undercurrent to everything. So for your leather, you wanna start out with, with, with the Seraphim Sepia. That gives you a yellow tone to it and will help you give a realistic leather color. I really need to get a base for, for these pots because I keep knocking them over. But literally, you're gonna take the Seraphim Sepia and you're gonna just paint it on. And you do one layer of this. Um, and this is, this is specifically for natural leather. There are, other, there are other techniques you can do for other colors. And I'll show you one of those on He-Man's skirting but you paint on your seraphim sepia, and it doesn't matter if you get a little bit over the edge on most of this. You wanna make sure you get, get, get your uh, base coat covered completely though. And the reason that I say it doesn't matter if you get a little bit over the edge is because these washes, in this case shades, but I'm using them as a wash, actually sink down into the crevices, and since we're doing several layers, it actually adds a shadowed nuance at the edge of your leather piece and since leather has some weight and thickness to it that actually helps add to the illusion that this specific piece is is what we're trying to portray which like I say in this case is leather. I'm gonna switch to a bigger brush here for her. And yes I just like my brush uh, to get a finer point on it, I really need to go back through and reshape all my brushes. And we may do a brush care tutorial because if you've got good brushes, you can actually they, they will actually last for years as long as you take care of them properly. Now, as you can see on her, and I messed up. I meant to do her gloves as well. When all while this is dry, while we do the dry time, I'll actually paint her gloves up. But as you see, we've got the good basis for a leather tunic. And I purposely put a little bit in that crease to be, because that, that would be darker. I'm gonna do the same on all three of these guys. And on both shades of, of the paint that we're using for our leather base. Now, 
when you're doing this, you want to go a little light, partially because you don't want the Seraphim sepia to overtake all your colors. And if you go heavier than, than you should, it's going to take you a long time to finish any leather piece because you got to wait for it to dry. Now on this guy, he's got a Roman style skirt on as well as a, well, it's, I'll call it a girdle. It's a belt designed to, to protect, to protect the, the mid, the mid section. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that in a different color and I'll show you how, how, how to do that one, once we get the base leather applied. Like I said, I'm going through and doing everything here. And after we get this done, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and go back and I'll show you how to do uh, realistic, realistic aged metal tones using the you using the uh, same basic techniques but when we're done we'll have a complete paint on on these three figures <coughs> sorry about that still getting over that cough but the most important thing to remember at this point is that you want to get your entire painted leather covered because if you don't, that brighter paint will stand out and it'll strike a false note in your, fi in your final paint job. Oops. And if you're looking closely, you can see that I got a little bit over, that, uh, over the edge of that, of that uh, leather strap there and into the crevice, but like I said, at this point, that doesn't matter. It helps give a fairly realistic shadow on the finished product. As you can see, he's looking kind of the, kind of like she is. And once again on He-Man, we're gonna, we're gonna do the exact same thing. And in case you didn't notice, I actually paint a lot faster when I'm not talking. So I'm gonna be quiet for just a moment and knock out these fine pieces real quick. And then we'll go to, a, go to dry time and I'll come back to the next part of the tutorial. Okay, these have dried, and if you take a look at the light at the light tone I did, it looks well a lot like well the leather you'd find on a Timberland hiking boot. That's not what most of us are going for. Um, adventure worn leather is a lot darker, um, and we want a lot we want a lot more nuance to the colors here. So, with our next step, we're going to take an Agrax Earth Shade. Um, we're going to apply that once again to all of the leather that, 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 we've, that we've got on these figures. And as, you, as I do this, you'll see that that brown and that yellow come together to make this look very, very much like realistic leather. Now, at this point, I need to tell you that, yes, your figures are going to look like crap. Believe it or not, that is by design. As you go through and do this, you're gonna you're going to be touching up and covering. That's why I started with the skin. That's the lowest point in the model. 
That's the lowest point that you're going to have. So you start with the skin, you then paint the stuff that's above the skin, and you keep moving up as you go. And as you do that, everything gets painted properly and stuff stops looking like crap. If you take a look at that, you can see her apron now looks like leather. There's still quite a bit to do on it because it's got some metallic piping and everything. But as I finish out the figures, you'll see what I'm talking about. Here in a second, I'm going to go back and do her, do her gloves while I'm waiting for the rest of the others to dry. But you do this for the entirety of the figures. You're going to go back over and paint all the little bits that you did in, a, in Seraphim Sepia in a nice Agraxer shade, which is going to give you leather straps and nice white expanses of leather. Now, when I get to that point, I'm actually going to uh, change the skirts that He-Man and Big Guy are wearing. I'm going to call him John Henry for now. But we'll do that by adding another layer of color. Um, the reason I'm switching figures here is I, I don't like switching brushes because it slows me down. So I'm using my fine brush to get the straps. Then I'll go back up over with a uh, number three because that allows me to get coverage a little better. But I want to make sure that I'm not messing up my skin tone by trying to do these with a with a, with a wider brush. Now I decided on, on these figures that these guys were actually wearing gloves because they both got bracers. So that's why if, you, if you're looking closely, you're not seeing you're, seeing, you're seeing that their hands aren't painted and that was by design and choice. But like I say, right now, these honestly look like crap. But that is part of the process, and that, that's what this is. this is. This entire thing is a process. And as we complete the process, the figures will end up looking a lot better and pretty darn amazing. But as you see, as I brush on this Agrax Earth Shade, that goes from a, a raw leather texture to a finished leather texture and really, really sells what we're trying to do here. And honestly, that's what we're that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to sell the effect. And that's what miniatures painting is. We're, we're taking something that is not the material we the, that we're trying to sell and we're trying to convince the eye. And when we use these shades, they sink down into all the cracks and give us texture and shadow where there was none before. Well, there was texture, but it didn't it, it didn't we didn't have those shadows because nothing was filling those in. Now, if you take a look at look at his cloak on the back, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. If you want to darken it up, you can add another layer of Agrax Earth Shade, or you can go in and add another sepia, Seraphim Sepia if you want it to be darker um, and more yellow. I don't normally do that because I find that this that this process makes for a pretty convincing leather texture. And I'm just going to do, like I said, all the stuff that we painted before. Now, on figures like him, where he's got a skirt and his legs are sticking out of the bottom of it, I like to add quite a bit of the Seraphim Sepia because it gives you the impression of shadow between his legs. And if that's not dark enough when you finish up, you can go back with a little bit of Nolan Oil or a, or a black wash and paint over that again to finish out the shadow.
Now his boots have several plates on them. I'm going to probably do those up in a metal tone. I may not, I haven't decided yet. Uh, which is something I will advise against. If you're painting minis, sit down and decide on your color scheme before you go. Uh, I tend to do the exact opposite of that, but that is only because I start out with a set color scheme and then decide that I don't like it. We're gonna let these dry and I'll be back in a moment or two. And remember I was saying about how if you if you thought it should be darker, go ahead and add another layer. I don't like the front of her uh, the front of her apron being as light as it is. So I'm gonna add another layer to make that darker. And you can see what I mean by that. So right there, I've actually just put it with one with one uh, additional layer of shade, I have completely given, well, given her a completely s different uh, tone on a second part there. And I'm gonna go ahead and Pause for a minute. When I come back, I will I will have done her her gloves, and we should be ready to move on. Okay. Now, as you can see, I'll zoom in a little bit here for you. Sorry, it's hard to aim when you're looking away. As you can see, I've got her apron done and her gloves done. The gloves and apron blend in a little bit together. So I'm gonna probably give her a different color to those gloves. Um, same way we're gonna do the skirting on He-Man and John Henry here. And the way you do that is pretty simple. For He-Man, I want a reddish tinge to it. So we're gonna get start with a uh, Karlberg Crimson, <coughs> which is a Citadel shade. It's a lovely, kind of purplish red. I'm gonna use my pipette. You can use a brush. And I'm just gonna drop like two drops in there. Take a little bit of water and mix it down to about half strength. So we've got a transparent wash and I may add a little bit more of the uh, shade here in a second. And you brush that on over yeah, I didn't get enough. The beautiful thing about this is since it's watered down, you can literally just take a paper towel, hit that, and it sucks it right off the model. So I'm add a little bit more of my shade here. Mix that down again. I'm gonna add that to the skirting here, and we get a nice, worn red leather tone. Now you may, this is basically glazing. You may need to do a couple layers to get the color you want. I want it to be subtle because literally all it's gonna do is set that off from the other two leather colors that we've got. And I'm gonna set that aside. Now, for John Henry here, I really think that his Roman style battle skirt needs to be a completely different color from the rest of it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Beal Tan Green because I think that'll look really good with his skin tone. And I'm gonna use that full strength and once again, just brush it on. The reason I'm just brushing this one on is because greens, well, go watch the uh, color theory video by George Sabo in the uh, playlist. that will have more in it eventually, but Sage Advice with Sabo. And you can see, and he talks about the strength of colors. And certain colors ha are a lot stronger than other colors and lend their 
their tone a lot better. But just a couple quick brushes with it with this green, and you've got a green leather that the high points actually stick out, so it looks like the leather has been aged and worn a little bit. And you got that nice green on that skirt. And what I'm also going to do here, just to tie it together, is I'm going to do that with the with the bits on his boots. He's got these little uh, frilly bits that kind of match the the skirting. So I'm going to go ahead and make those green too, just to tie the outfit together. And as you can see, pretty quickly, that takes on a dyed leather appearance. Now, <clears throat> the reason this works is that when you're actually dyeing leather, leather dyes are pretty much transparent. And they do exactly that. They dye the leather. They don't actually they don't actually get painted on. They have leather paints. I'm going to glaze that again. They have leather paints, but leather paints completely obscure it. When you dye your leather, you're putting a transparent or translucent color onto a tan or brown surface, and therefore your undercoat is at, your under color is actually going to stick out. Now, for her gloves, because I've got the two different shades of blue for, for the rest of her outfit, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and do the uh, Dra Dragonoff Nightshade, which again is a shade. And since this is a blue-green, blue is pretty strong, but I'm going to go ahead and paint that on kind of thin. And that will give her gloves a different appearance. Now, since I just did this, this is a good time to talk about if you get too much on there, like I did in the wrist there, dry your brush out, touch a dry brush to very lightly to the spots where you've got too much on there, and it will pull that off. It wicks the excess color away. And I'm going to take a moment again to point out that your miniature at this point in time is going to look pretty crappy. Um, as you can see with her, it's starting to come together. But she still looks really bad and unfinished. But as you start to go back and add detail, that, that's going to change. So you saw her. I wanted the red on He-Man's skirting to be pretty subtle, and it's working. I'm going to add just one more layer over here because it's drifting off a little bit from the center. There we go. And that, my friends, is how you do leather. The next tutorial is going to be probably about doing detail. Actually, no, the next tutorial is going to be about doing realistic metal. Um, I'm not talking about non-metal metallics, and I'm not talking about uh, true metal metallics. I'm talking about how to use your uh, metallics and a wash to get a convincing patina for tabletop miniatures and the like. It's the same technique that we use uh, for, uh, for fencing, for shields, for armor, and it adds a lot of depth to it. But we'll get to that next. And after that, we'll do wood. Because this guy is using, is wielding a club. And she's got a tree stump there. Both of which already have the texture into them. So they'll be very good candidates for a simple wood, wood covering. Thank you for uh, watching Miniatures Painting A to Z. And... Uh, We'll catch you next time. In case you're wondering, I'm getting ready. I, I want these straps on his uh, 
on its chest to be a little darker. So I'm going to add another layer of Bagrat Exert Shade, but we'll see you next time.